The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4 that in the last days there will be doctrines of devils, doctrines of devils. And the Bible says also in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 that we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important to know that in the last days what Satan's doing in what Satan is doing to our world on how he's deceiving people in the last days. And what he wants to do is to break your focus, your attention. So we're going to be looking at 1 Peter chapter 5. You know what he does? He appeals to the eyes. You, you have five senses in your body. Satan, he will always appeal to your flesh. So you have the eyes. You have the smell. You have taste. Feelings. And hearing. These are the five sensations of your body. What Satan wants to do is to appeal, satisfy these five senses. When he does that, he got you. He got you. And how he does that, he appeals your five senses, is that he also has to attack your mind. When your mind is dulled, and then these five sensations are all that you are focusing on, all that are active, that can be a very dangerous thing. So that's important to realize. It can be a hypnotic effect. That's how he can control you. So let me explain here. First Peter chapter 5, we will read verse 8. Be what? Sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So you got to realize this, is that the Bible says you have to be sober-minded. Sober-minded. In other words, you have to be serious-minded. If you don't be serious-minded, Satan as a roaring lion will walk about and he will try to destroy you. If you understand, that's what he's going to be trying to do. We're going to look at also Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. So here's how he can attack you through these things. First thing, think about this, is drugs. Now, drugs, what sensations do they appeal to? They appeal to taste. They appeal to feelings. But you're not, but how often is your mind focusing on that after you take the drug? Yeah. It's not. It's dulled. And God says you have to be sober. In, in other words, you have to be serious-minded. Your mind has to be focusing. And if you're not sober-minded and it's dulled down and the sensations of your flesh are focused more, then he's got a hold of you. But that's why there are uh, necromancers, that's why there are witches, that's why there are occultists. What they will do is that they use drugs to communicate with spirits. Do you know why? When yourself, when you are not of your own, see that? When you are not of your own right here, and your mind is being attacked, then something else will take control of you. Alternate. When it, you reach to an alternate state of consciousness. So your consciousness is dull. The mind's dulled. And the sensations of your flesh are all heightened. When it does that, then you can actually go into a spiritual world after that. So you can head toward a spiritual world and you can communicate with devils after that. That's why witches and witch doctors and there will be occultists who use drugs to communicate with spirits. Why? Because you're dulled the sensations of your mind, of your own thinking. And some and when you're in an alternate state of consciousness, let me ask you this, who's controlling your mind now? Who's controlling your mind when you're high on drugs? Not you. Something else is controlling you. Another thing Satan will attack is music. That's why we're against contemporary music. Rock, pop, Jazz, rap, bebop, swing, disco, etc. Contemporary. Contemporary music, we're against it. Do you know why? Because if you studied history of the backbeat, all of those genres have one common thing. It's called backbeat. When you study backbeat, backbeat comes from African voodoo, you must understand. It comes from African voodoo, and through African voodoo, they communicate with spirits through that contemporary music. I mean, st study these famous rock musicians like Jimi Hendrix, etc. 
They use music to communicate with devils. You might say, why is that? Because see, what it does, it heightens the sensations of your flesh. That's why you need the rap. You need the rock. You need that jazz. Why? Because it heightens, it appeals to the feelings of your flesh. Hearing. And you're hearing. And then what it does is that you're not really focusing when you're listening to music. You're being controlled of something else now. So that's why occultists can use music to communicate with spirits. Because that's why a lot, of, you ever notice why they keep repeating in the backbeat music? You notice that? When you hear, I don't know if you paid attention to the music. Yeah. Why do they have a constant repeating pattern? Why do Christian churches always repeat lyrics like five times, seven times and with the backbeat? You know why? Because what it's doing, see, is that your mind's not of your own. Something else is trying to control you now. After that, the music, it will drill into your head. Here's another one. It's TV. TV, that includes the internet, that includes your video games, that includes YouTube, that includes the television shows that you watch. All this, how many times have you seen if you have a kid or a baby, they run around like really wild? But how many parents, they, they lose control of taking care of the kids, so what they resort to is that having them watch TV. And they're so quiet as a mouse after that. Why? It has that effect. It has the effect where their mind and their sensations are not their own and all they're focusing is all those pictures on a screen. Why do people keep playing, have an addiction to video games, an addiction to television, addiction to the internet? And that includes YouTube as well. Why is that? Because it does have an addicting effect. In fact, if you study some of these people who worked for the founders of social media, such as Facebook and other, and other uh, computer and internet web web networks, they realize that this thing has a hypnotic and addicting effect. It really addicts the user. That's why they have a thing called friendly user, friendly user. You know why? It's so friendly that you keep want to move the mouse. If you don't believe me, get yourself away from a screen now. Yep. See how hard it is after you've been there for hours. Yeah. So what it does, it appeals to your eyes. It appeals to your hearings. It appeals to your hearing, what you're hearing. That's why they get so many people. Theaters will never go bankrupt. You ever thought of that? Theaters will never go bankrupt. You know why? Doesn't matter how rich or how poor you are, they will go to watch a movie. So Satan, he attacks through television. That's why a lot of you out there, I hope you're not believing just because what you're watching on a screen. Do you know how many cults are taking advantage of YouTube now, deceiving the people who are watching online? They're doing that because they're taking advantage of this platform. And I want those people out there not to see that way. I want them to see the scriptures. I want them to use their minds when I'm teaching this. Not go, uh-huh, 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 like that. I want them to say amen and to agree when their mind is focusing and they're studying. Oh, okay, that's clicking. Oh, that's clicking, okay. Another thing that Satan will use is meditation. You might say, seriously, Pastor? Yeah, you know why? You're emptying your mind. When you empty your mind, you're replacing it with something else. Do you know Rick Warren? He's inviting the emergent church movement where they have a thing called Jesus prayers or breath prayers. Yeah. So basically, you just keep repeating words, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's a meditation technique. But that is middle, that is Eastern pagan practices. That is Hindu Buddhist practices. Right. And a lot of churches are inviting that. You have Christian yoga in churches now. You're having all this kind of meditation stuff. When the Bible says meditate on the word, it says on the word of God. Mm -hmm. See, it's on the word of God. But in meditation techniques, what they want to do is for you to empty something of yourself. And to focus one particular thing after that. So these meditation techniques require emptiness. There's a prerequisite of emptiness, emptying yourself. And then you'll notice also with certain meditations, why do they do repetitions? You ever notice that? Yeah. Repetitions. So something else can take control of you. Not your own, not your own mind. Look at Romans chapter 12, verse 2. 
and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. That ye may, see, by using your mind, your thinking, that ye may prove. See, you got to prove. But see, these things you can't really prove and analyze, can you? No wonder people suck up to whatever the news media says, even though they say they don't believe everything the news says, but they believe it. Do you know why? See, it's all where you're not proving with the renewing of your mind. You're not thinking. You're not using your head. You're just at an alternate plane right here. So that's what Satan will take advantage of. There's also a passage in Luke where the Bible says that when the spirit is gone out of a man, yeah, yeah. then when the spirit goes out of a man, he tries to find a place to possess. But when he tries to find a place to possess, he finds none. So he says, you know what? I'll go back to the house where I came out. I'll go back to the body of the man that I used to possess yeah. and got out. But I'm going to return back to that guy. And when he returns to that guy, the Bible says he finds it garnished, swept. He's empty. So because of that, the Bible says that that spirit is able to take in seven more unclean spirits to fit inside that man. Why is that, Pastor? Because he's emptied more room. The more, see, here's the point, folks. The more you empty of yourself, where you're not thinking, the more you're just an open target for something to take control of you. That's right. That's why uh, you ever saw these hypnotic techniques where they would like put them where their mind is emptied out, where they don't use your, their head, where it's a re repetition, repetitious state, where it is appealing to the five senses. That's why sometimes they'll light those incense stuff to make you feel relaxed. Yeah. A room where it's calm and soothing, where your eyes are relaxed. See that? You're all so mesmerized right now, right? See that? I'm controlling you right now. See that? <laughs> But he, here's the point. The point is, joking aside, you have to be analyzing. See, you have to be analyzing and realizing that people, they do have a hypnotic effect when you're not using your head. And the Bible always demanded that you got to prove all things with Scripture. Yeah, yeah. And you have to be doing that when there's a preacher speaking on the pulpit. That's why you ever been to those churches where the preacher says something blatantly off? And then you look at the member like, I can't believe what he just said, but the member doesn't get it. Yeah. And they're just listening. You know why? Mesmerized, see that? They're not using their head. <laughs> they're not using their head. And the Bible says it's very important to use your head.